Welcome to video presentation from Big D Soul. In this presentation we will be focusing Hadoop Distributed File System, also known as HDFS, a key building block of Hadoop. We will first look at Hadoop ecosystem components, and importance of HDFS. Since HDFS is more to do with file handling, storage, read and write operations, so we feel it's good to know some key hardware terms, so we will explain rack, cluster, nodes and commodity hardware first, and then take up the HDFS architecture. Later we will cover HDFS read and write, and few commands of HDFS. Also we will cover HDFS internals, block size, name node communication. And we will end this presentation with one small quiz. As you can see in the diagram, HDFS and MapReduce are the key building block for Hadoop, and over a period of time ecosystem is evolved, and now have many utility or framework to make Hadoop implementation and adoption more viable and developer friendly. HDFS main functionality is to provide a framework for data handling, fault tolerance. Program need not to worry about underlying complexity, and offers reliability, scalability to petabyte size of data. It provides distributed services which runs on commodity hardware. HDFS provides easy mechanism to handle large data volume file and provide a high throughput. The other outer circle shown in the diagram caters to different needs like Hive is useful if you do not want to write MapReduce program and want to get results by firing SQL-like queries. Pig is useful for handling unstructured data. Since objective of this video is focus on HDFS, so we will not discuss other components. Before we get into HDFS, let us spend some time in understanding few hardware specific terms, so that later you could visualize big picture. First is understanding a rack. Rack servers are computers that are designed to function as servers and are configured for installation in a central framework that is known as a rack. Sometimes referred to as a rack mounted server, this computer fits neatly into a slot in the rack and functions to coordinate all local and remote sharing that is conducted throughout the facility. Both small large businesses make use of rack mounted servers, especially if there is a need to provide remote access to a private network. While similar to a tower server in function, these two types of servers are different is construction. The tower server is more of a cabinet that stands alone, and tends to be taller. The rack server, by contrast, allows access to the servers by opening enclosures found on at least two sides of the rack. It may also take up less space than a tower server, although this is not always the case. One of the advantages of rack mounting is that several servers can be placed into the base or slots of the rack. This makes it easy to connect the computers to other network components. Doing so not only makes it possible to maintain a primary server, but to also establish a secondary server that will drive the network in the event of an emergency. With larger companies, a series of servers may service different parts of the network, while allowing the connected servers to exchange data on an as-needed basis. You will often hear that Hadoop can run on commodity hardware hence provides economy of scale. We should know what commodity hardware is, and how much it is cheaper than the custom built or specialized hardware. Commodity hardware is hardware that is easily and affordably available. A device that is set to use commodity hardware is one that uses components that were previously available or designed and are thus not necessarily unique to that device. The Microsoft Xbox, for instance, was set to use commodity hardware because it used components that were the same as or very similar to those found in ordinary desktop PCs, like hard drives or DVD drives. The hardware configuration would pretty much normal commercial usage standards like few terabyte storage and prevalent RAM size. Custom built hardware are expensive, for example supercomputers used for weather forecasting and scientific research. 
IBM Sequoia world's fastest supercomputer so far, cost more than 1 million US dollars. Let us understand a cluster and a node concept. Usually a single computer serves as a node, and when many such noded are connected through LAN, then this system logically form a single unit known as cluster. Many operations can be performed at the cluster level, rather at the node level. The cluster is very useful in distributed computing, there many such clusters can form a one big ecosystem for large volume data processing. This setup also suitable to configure failover management. Now the question comes how a typical Hadoop enterprise level node configuration looks like. As you can see a Hadoop node configuration, which is of course a commodity hardware, medium one having eight physical core, 16 gigabytes RAM, 4 terabyte of disk space. Whereas a high end looks like having 12 physical core, 48 gigabytes RAM, 36 terabyte disk space. These kind of machine costs somewhere 2000 to 3000 US dollars. So in a budget of 100,000 you can have two clusters set up with 25 nodes each. An extremely large implementation like Yahoo can have up to 4,000 nodes, handling 16 petabyte size of enormous data. The accumulative RAM size could be 64 terabyte, means each node having 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 4 core processor in each node. Armed with some key hardware concepts, let us dive into HDFS architecture and how does it handle file read and write operations. A little direction check. We have covered so far. Few hardware terms like rack, commodity hardware, HDFS architecture, read and write operations. Armed with some key hardware concepts, let us dive into HDFS architecture and how does it handle file read and write operations. Few fact to remember about HDFS. Distributed file system designed to run on low-cost commodity hardware. Designed more for batch processing rather than interactive use by users. HDFS has simple coherency model, write once read many access model for files. A file once created, written, and closed need not to be changed. This assumption simplifies data coherency issues and enables high throughput data access. Applications that run on HDFS need streaming access to their data sets. Supports huge data volume, data divided into default 64 megabyte blocks, usual industry practice is to use 128 megabyte block size. Highly fault tolerant, each block replicated three times. Let us explore a little more on HDFS. The HDFS evolved out of white papers published from Google. Live Google file system, GFS, became basis for HDFS. MapReduce is implemented as MapReduce, Bigtable is implemented as HBase, which is a columnar table. Google only published white papers, the open source community implemented them. Let us try to understand the HDFS architecture. HDFS has master and slave architecture. Client first interacts with master, which has named node and secondary node. Named node is master here, who remembers where the data nodes are. The secondary node is merely a utility to transfer the in-memory data to persistent location. Another important component of master node is job tracker. Job tracker oversees and coordinates the parallel processing of data using MapReduce. Slave nodes make up the vast majority of machines and do all the dirty work of storing the data and running the computations. Each slave runs both a data node and task tracker daemon that communicate with and receive instructions from their master nodes. The task tracker daemon is a slave to the job tracker, the data node daemon a slave to the name node. Let us look at HDFS write. When file comes for loading, client divides into multiple of blocks based on block size settings. 
In this example file is divided into block A and block B. Now client consult to named node, for writing to data nodes in cluster. The named node, is rack aware, it exactly knows which data node exists in which rack. Also it will maintain metadata information, in this example how the sample text data will be stored, will be maintained in named node. After getting the data node information from named node, client signals corresponding data node to get ready for incoming data. First node communicates to second and second, to third. And the final node sends OK signal back to client. Same block data is written three times, to maintain redundancy, which is required for fault tolerance. Also look closely, algorithms are written intelligently, so that the first data block will be on separate rack, while the second and third data block will be on same rack. This will help in faster response time. Same process is repeated for writing the block B. Hadoop and all its ecosystem are command line interface, also called SCLI in short form. There is very little GUI orientation. This is how a command line looks like, where we can fire set of commands to load file, manage directories and so on. Command has three parts, one is command like FS, generic options like configuration, and finally command option like list. Relatively very few HDFS related UI exists, one of them are checking the name node related information. You can see in the configuration we have only one data node now. Also you can see luster summary, disk storage usage. Let us explore how Hadoop organizes folders internally and what is the functionality and naming conventions of them. In the main HDFS folder you can observe specific folders for second name node, data node, map reduce, and name node. The second name node contains folder as current and image. The data node folder contains current folder, block being written. We will explore the current folder. The current folder contains three kind of files, very first one is actual data file, as you can see files of 64 megabyte, as the block size for this Hadoop setup is set for 64 megabyte, if you set 128 megabyte, then you will see few file of 128 megabyte. Also look at the naming convention, file name stats with blk which is for block, and then the block id. The second file is metadata file. And third one is subdirectory, since Hadoop is operating system agnostic, you can theoretically implement on any operating system, and some operating systems have limit on max number of files a folder can have. In order to avoid that limitation, HDFS creates subdirectories, and then stores the data. And finally a name node, having current folder, Inside current folder you can see FS image file, a very important file, contains information on block details, mapping of file to block among others. Now we are comfortable with HDFS architecture, and internals, let us have a look at a summarized functionality of various components. Client requests to name node, before performing any operation, the name node provides metadata information like the location of files, and mapping of file to block, after that client can directly work with data nodes for read and write operations. The name node has following functionality. Allocation of blocks to file. Monitoring data node for data node failure and new data node addition. Replication management. User requests management like writing file, reading file etc. Transaction tracking and logging of transaction. The data node performs following operations. Write slash read block to slash from local file. Perform operation as directed by name node. Register slash heartbeat itself with name node and provide block report to name node. Let us look at different logical components of name node which are involved in the request processing. 
Client requests are received by listener. Listener puts them into the call queue. These requests are picked by handler and on completion of task, the handler alerts to response queue, then the responder take the completed queue, and sends to the requester, which is client in this case. Just to solidify our understanding, another illustration of how a file is handled in a block. Let us assume we have request for two files, file A is of 70 megabyte size, while file B is of 8 megabyte size. The way HDFS would handle is, it will split the files into chunk of 64 megabyte, which is the default block size. Hence file A, two chunks, first is of 64 megabyte, while the second chunk of 8 MB is prepared. The first chunk of 64 megabyte will fit into one block, while the other will go to second block. As you can see 56 megabyte is still left in second block. Now the question comes for file B, should it go to block B, where 56 megabyte is still left, and the answer is, it would not touch the block B for a new file. Rather it would open a new block C, and store the file B over there. Remember, one block one file. Let us have a quiz to ensure we understand the block size, and the way HDFS handles the files. Assuming a block size of 128 megabyte and the disk space of 10 gigabytes, across all data nodes, HDFS effectively has 80 blocks. Suppose if we create 10 small files which together take 128 megabyte on disk and 10 HDFS blocks. Question is after creating the 10 files, Will HDFS recalculate the disk available blocks to be 79 or will it be 70? In other words, how many block will be consumed by 10 files? The answer is 70. Remember, one file one block, since 10 files, HDFS will reserve 10 block, even the file size is smaller. Here we are assuming the file replication factor is 1. Thank you very much for watching the video from Big D Soul. We are a small group of working professionals trying to make impact in big data landscape. Out of our hectic office hours, we devote weekend time in developing products and providing trainings. Hope you have enjoyed it. You may contact us on the below given email.